I think woman is owning who you are and walking very tall in that uh, affirmation every day. And um, I feel like women wear invisible crowns every day. Of course, I have mine on today, but I think that we carry such purpose of keeping the earth together um, mm. in the universe. And so as a woman, I take it as, a, as an honor to carry the title of being a woman. Womanhood has taught me to be fearless. Um, a lot of times we face life thinking things are insurmountable and once you get to it, you're like, it really wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. And so being a woman, I have I know that we are equipped to do whatever we wanna do and um, I've just been fearless in everything that I've put my hands on. My number one advice is to own your story. I think a lot of people, uh, we, we have this spirit of confusion where we look at other people and say, man, I wish I could do this, I wish I could do that, and not understanding that your narrative is very unique to you. So when you own mm. your story, you don't have to worry about what, what the next woman is doing. And so it's okay to fall off track and things to happen that may not be what you want, but it's a part of your story, so stick with it. What's happening, man? It's Kemar Kane coming to you all the way live. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank y'all for tuning in to Working Woman Wednesday. Understand something, man. This is episode number five. That's right. Number five is going down in a major way. Have a very special guest, the beautiful and beautifully talented artist herself, Melissa Mitchell. Melissa, thank us. Thank you for joining us on today. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So I want to dig into like how does you even get started? with everything, with painting, you got your beautiful decor on, you know, you've turned your painting into, into clothing, accessories, and I et cetera. Have, have. So let's, let's get into that. What, what, what was that journey like in the beginning? So I love to tell the story how I became a painter by accident, right? Um, 2014, worst snowstorm in Atlanta history. The driveway is frozen. My job is telling me I can't come to the office. I'm at home board. The light's going in and out, and I heard God say paint. I'm like, paint? That's not my ministry. I don't do painting. You know, that's not what I'm supposed to do. And I literally heard him say paint. Went to the garage, got some old wood, um, and just picked up a paintbrush I had from some old gifts I made and started doodling. Mm -hmm. And on Instagram, I'm like, what y'all doing during the paint storm? This is what I'm doing. Laughing, LOL. LOL. Put, the, put it up there. Somebody said, I'll give you 50 bucks for it. Mm -hmm. I was like, for this? I was like, <laughs> okay, well, let me do this two more times and pay some bills. So long story short, it found, painting found me. And um, I tell that story because in my darkest moment, God gave me the brightest invention. Wow. And so I use colors that are usually unconventional and I mash them together. So I'll use an aqua and a hot pink or, mm -hmm. you know, use a black with a brown and throw a little bit of uh, blue in there. And so for me, my story has been one of motivation. Um, art, artwork is just my platform. Mm -hmm. um, I tell people all the time that I traded my uh, pulpit for a paintbrush mm -hmm. because everybody knows my, pa my families are full of pastors. But God told me that something's different is going to be used for me. And so the reason I'm so, uh, so committed to wearing a head wrap because I want to remind us of our royalty that's in our DNA and that my, even my kimonos that I came out with remind me of the story of Joseph, the coat of many colors, and that we have been chosen for this generation to be great leaders. And so everything that I do has great intention. So, oh, you wearing a head wrap? I said, no, it's a story to this, boo. Let yeah. me tell you about it. And so it gives me a chance to almost evangelize through artwork. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think for me, my calling is so much bigger than a paintbrush. Um, I believe that I've been called to go to the nation to talk about God's grace and to encourage people to to dream bigger and to be fearless with their with their beliefs. And so um, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> yeah. So it, from the sound of it, you are not money driven by this gift that you develop. You're more mission driven, you would say, correct? And I think and I think a lot of people yeah. misuse money. So they think money is the root of all evil. No, mm. it's people at the root of all evil. And it's how you use your money. And so um, even with the money that I was able to amass from um, artwork, I was able to be a blessing to my family, buy my first home. Um, become debt free in some areas and I learned to 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 master the power of money mm -hmm. it's bigger than saying I want to be a millionaire it says who can I give access to to become millionaires too wow. and so God blesses those who are blessing to others so every time I make a little bit of money I say mom check it check your cash app she's like girl you, you crazy I said well you know God bless me it's my it's my duty and so um and as wow. you know I, I make it my I make it a point to be a blessing to other people you do and I don't and I don't uh talk about it out loud people don't have to know it um I'm the person that'll pay somebody's groceries and just walk away. Well, what's your name? I said, you don't have to know it. God told me to do this. Um, do those kind of things all the time. And because I am a silent giver, mm -hmm. God is a very public bless a blesser. And so things always come to me very public. People say, well, I, well how did this happen? How did Peter end up with your thing? I said, I did, I, I did say my prayer mm -hmm. and I did what I had to do and God made it happen. And so um, I think for me, it's every chance I get, I tell a testimony. Mm -hmm. and I think that's why God allows testimonies to keep coming to me. Because I'm not afraid to be vocal about God's grace. 
Wow. <laughs> Don't be afraid to be vocal about God's grace. That's Look, a t-shirt. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. We yeah. talked about Lupita a little bit. Oh, man. Now, you had put on your vision board, right? Yes. That you wanted her with yes. your head wrap. Yes. So when it comes to Lupita getting your head wrap, yes. first, how was that feeling seeing her in your head wrap? And how important is it for somebody to see their vision on paper before actually seeing it in person? Well, um, like I told you, I, I grew up in a very uh, spiritual home that's different from religious, but we'll talk about that later. But my father and my mother have always been big about writing your vision and making it plain. Mm -hmm. And so Habakkuk 2 and 2 has always been our family scripture. You write it down, you watch, watch it take flight, God can do it. And so in 2016, this is when I'm trying to come up with head wraps. I say, you know what, I want Lupita with my head wrap. I'm skipping past everybody else regular. Mm -hmm. I'm going directly to the top. And so one night um, I found out who her stylist was. I found out that they were actually friends and I started to research him for a month or two. And God told me to DM him. I was like, if this man ignore, cause you know, you can see if somebody read it or not. Mm -hmm. I said, this man go ignore my DMs. He gets DMs all the time. DM'd him, went to sleep. So I didn't know he was on London time. I get a notification at 4.15 a.m. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I love your stuff. Um, she would love it too. I was like, <laughs> Lupita would like my stuff? So long story short, he sends me all his information to talk to his publicist. Um, we arranged things to get to London. So she received a package in November 2016. Mm -hmm. She didn't start wearing it in 2017. So people don't know this was a long time in the making. They think she just woke up one day and said, oh, her wraps are cute. Let me put one on. And yeah. so God is, is all about you planting seeds and watching it grow. It's not like um, it's not like you just put something in the ground and it just grows immediately. I talk about the bamboo tree, um, how people how people plant a bamboo tree and wait for it to grow. Mm -hmm. And so for six or seven years, they're watering something and never see anything happen. They're, they're pruning the area, making sure the soil is right. Mm -hmm. And in that seventh year, it sprouts up 10 to 15 feet, right? And so mm -hmm. I said, I tell people that's how my career is. People are thinking, oh, you know, this overnight success, you're doing so well with your artwork. I said, no, boo, this was planned in 1982. My parents prayed over me every single night um, they gave us, they called us king, they call us queens every time we did something. They affirmed us. And so that building, that was a soil that was actually perfecting our, our path. And so in 2016, 17, 18, y'all are just seeing what they planted back 20, 30 years ago. Wow. And so seeing Lupita in that head wrap, it was an out of body experience, but it's also, okay, you're only as good as your last achievement. So what are you going to do next? And so I have my eyes on some bigger prizes that I won't talk about, but just know that God is going to give me a platform that will be undeniable. Um, that I know will only be God and God has closed so many doors. So I know that it's only him that opened that door. So, um, it's a blessing to see things come to pass, but I just want to encourage people to say, you can, you need to stop limiting yourself to these small dreams. I want to buy a house, buy a complex, <laughs> you know, I want to move to so-and-so. Why don't you just go to another area that you've never been to? Um, yeah. you know, and so I, I, just having friends and family that encourage you to push you to do things bigger and better. Um, I think that's what's big for me. So. That's how I ended up in this chair next wow. to you in my new home. Absolutely. <laughs> and congrats on the new home, thank by you, the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is literally a museum in here, guys. <laughs> the vibes is real. It's high, uh, high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you talked about how your parents prayed over you nightly. Yes, They yes. They, they help you to recognize yes. the queen in you. Yes. Like, how is how important is it for one to recognize their royal self? I think, um, and I talked about that in my last collection, once you know who you were and whose you are, it makes you act differently. Mm -hmm. It's almost like if you walked up on a, a red, something shiny on the ground, you know, all of a sudden I just found a little rock or something. When you find out that's a diamond, you're like, oh, I got a diamond. I found a diamond. So when you know something is rare and precious, you just mm -hmm. carry it with a different level of um, esteem. And so I think that as people, we have to understand who we are. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why a lot of people like studying your DNA is important, knowing who your family history is. And even if Thanks. you don't know, you need to start instilling things in yourself or, or start the narrative over. Some people came from some very rough backgrounds, but that does not mean that that's where you have to end. Um, but knowing where you are and where you've come from and who you belong to um, is very important for your success. Wow, yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, let's see. So how has this queen that you've recognized and been living through, mm -hmm. how has that helped you in your artwork and your personal life? In relationships with others, mm -hmm. how has that helped you? I think that my self-esteem is constantly evolving. Um, people think they see this whole big, uh, bigger than life personality, and I think it's just a decision. Um, when you treat yourself a certain way, it mm -hmm. forces other people to do the same thing. But also in relationships, you also don't just put yourself in a situation that will jeopardize being a queen. Mm. And so for me, it's, it's dating with deliberation, um, actually understanding my purpose, and I can't just partner my purpose with anyone. 
Um, and then going into a relationship knowing that I have to enhance someone's purpose and they have to also enhance mine. So dating with a purpose is totally different. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, my artwork is selling so well because I'm confident in that artwork. A lot of people say, well, I'm really good. I can't sell my stuff. I said, well, you're saying it before you leave the house. Mm. I go to an event. I said, if, if I sell something, I'm, I'm a wonderful artist. If I don't sell anything, guess what? I'm still a wonderful artist. And so that esteem is, is brought through my pieces. So people say, your stuff has changed so much. I said, no, I changed. Mm. So my artwork changed. And so I think that once you really develop self, and I tell everybody that the key to success is self-evolution. Um, when I first began, I was very sad. You know, I had a lot of depression, things dealing with my father's death and my grandmother's, and God allowed that to be my medicine. So my first artwork, you can even see, was very busy, very crowded, had all kinds of stuff. But now I'm very clear. Okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm only using four colors. Before, I had 15 colors. Mm -hmm. So God is very uh, very deliberate with well, how he allows your path to, to carry itself out. And so that's actually uh, chronicled in my work. Mm. Yeah. And when you said that, it made me think of a quote. Uh, that Les Brown once said before, he said, you don't have to be great to start, but you must start in order to be great. You gotta start, you gotta start. That's absolutely important. And I think that for creatives, we watch everybody else. Mm, yeah. And we say, well, man, Kimar got that show, man, I can't do no podcast, man. Kimar got, you know, he got a whole team with him. But guess what, when Kimar started, people got encouraged and wanted to be a part of what he was doing. Mm. And I think that as an artist, my entire family is involved. My mom does all my operations. My sister helps with shipping. My other sister is my communication director. My cousin flies in from him. She said, there is not a show that I won't be at that you do. And so when you, you include people in your vision, it becomes a collective vision, and then they start branching out doing things that they need to do. But you could be the hold up to somebody's vision coming to life because you're afraid. And so once I took that on, I was like, I need to do this because I might, it might be life or death for someone else. Wow. And so when you take that kind of take on life and vision, it's like, let me let me get some get up and go about what I'm doing. Um, and I think that um, seeing my father pass away, being the last person he spoke to, it really put a lot of things in perspective that all this stuff we get busy with doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Right. We have to look at life as being very precious, but at the same time, taking it as a charge from God and say, look, you only have X amount of days. What you going to do with it? Mm. And so every day I'm up at 5 a.m. going to bed, 2 or 3 o'clock and doing it over every other day because I know that each day is a gift and I must act uh, accordingly. Mm. Yeah. I love it. Now, <laughs> we're talking about Mr. Mitchell himself, your yes, father. Yes, yes, yes. Um, a lot of inspiration comes from your dad. Absolutely. Um, you recently released a book. Yes. Okay. Tell, yes. Them, tell the people what the name of your book is. The name of my book is called Views from My Kaleidoscope. And a lot of people ask me, why, you know, where'd you get that name from? I was literally talking to my publisher. I said, well, I don't have a name for the book. And I saw a kaleidoscope in the spirit. And so I don't know if you've seen an actual kaleidoscope, but when you look at it, it's all black, right? But when you look inside that hole, I mean, you see the most beautiful colors all mm. mixed in. And so that's what God told me is that when it seemed dark, I, I really focused in on what God was giving me and I saw beautiful colors. And that is what my interpretation is of what God has done with my life. And so um, just so grateful that God gave me a different view on life. They say you look at clo uh, look at things through a rose colored glasses, but mine are so many colors, I call it a kaleidoscope. And so with that book, um, I remember a couple of years before my dad passed away, he was like, man, I gotta put a book out, I'm doing this. He had all these ideas. And then life abruptly ended for him March 12, 2010. And so we found that book again. I said, man, you know, one day I wanna write a book. Mm -hmm. And um, that one day became um, January 11, 2018, this year. And I said, for every book that he wasn't able to write, I want to write 11. And so each month of this year, I'll be releasing either an ebook or an actual physical book um, in his honor. But um, we have to pick up the torches that were left behind, the mantles. I don't know if you're familiar with the story of Elijah and Elisha oh, yeah. in the Bible, but the mantle is for us to double. Mm. And so for everything he couldn't do, that one thing, I'll do it twice. And so double the favor, double the anointing, double the calling, um, double the outlay, double the innovation, double the ideas. Um, that's how I'm able to produce because I'm not doing this by myself. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite quotes is that we are our ancestors' wildest dreams. Um, we are our ancestors to be continued. Um, hey. And so they were able to transition because they knew that they could leave their dreams on earth. It would be safe with who came behind them. And so I, like I am that. a dream keeper of my ancestors. I like that. So um, here we are. I like that a lot. Yeah. yeah. You can't steal that. We're going to have to, uh, we're gonna have to <laughs> we're gonna have to do some copyright stuff. But yeah, I think that once you, once you take a charge to knowing that it's bigger than you, mm -hmm. you get over stuff a whole lot easier. Um, and that's, that's even when I get the no, I got a really big no this year. I was like, do y'all know who I am? I was like, God was like, they know who you are, but they don't mm. know whose you are. Wow. And they don't know that it's going to come full circle. And so I walked out of there with that, with my no, 
with my hair wrap on when it got me some Chipotle <laughs> and kept it moving. But God showed me that there are going to still be some no's. No matter how high you get, there's still going to be some people that don't get it. And mm. that's okay. And that is okay. It's cool. It's cool. Going back to the art. Yes. You've been able to turn these art pieces yes. into accessories. Yeah, the wearable kimono, art. Wearable the, art, yes. Wearable art. The yes. kimono, the head wrap. Yeah. You even got socks in the game. Pocket for the squares, guys. working Pocket on furniture. Yeah. Furniture. Yeah, yeah, Look, yeah, yeah, yeah. Turning one do y'all see how one idea can turn into branches and multiple streams of income? You understand what I'm yeah. saying? Like this yeah. is a living example right yeah. here. The one yeah. and only Melissa A. Mitchell. Yes. I want to say the A. Yes. The A. <laughs> ABL for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what gave you the idea to even do head wraps? And you give head wraps like different names and everything. Yes. The inspiration yes. behind all of that. So um, for me, head wrapping was a easy way out because I don't want to do my hair. And so um, I was doing these art shows with other people's stuff on my head. I was like, I need to wear my art. Like, I, sh I should be able to sell what I wear. And so um, God said, your art will be wraps. I was like, art wraps, head wraps, wear bar. I was like, oh my God, this is like a thing. And so um, went home, did some um, manipulate, because I'm also a graphic designer um, by trade. Um, that was my major in college. People don't know that. Um, so that was my minor. So I'm really good on the computer, really creative with that. Came up with a design, ran into a company that needed what I had. Um, we came up with some different, we took us about six months to get the right fabric. Um, the first head wraps, I sold about 100 within about an hour. Wow. Um, went on campus at FAMU, selling head wraps out of my purse, never had a website. So let me just see if people want to buy this stuff. People would stop me on the road. They were like, bro, where are you at? What's your GPS? Send it to me. I mean, buying head wraps out of my purse. And that's when I knew that this was something bigger than me. Um, had celebrities wear my stuff, people tag me, people from all over the world, but it really showed me that one idea, like you said, can turn into an enterprise. And really it's all about trusting God with what you have. And um, so I pay homage to all the people who have helped me and kept me sane during this process. So every head wrap is named after somebody I admire, um, a different queen that I've studied in history, my mama, my sisters, um, my best friends, and a lot of, it's just people that kept me going. Um, so every rap, like the one I have on today is named after June Ambrose. Um, she's one of the premier African-American women um, stylists in the game. But she's the one that first put uh, Jay-Z in a designer suit and made all the rappers change the game. Mm. And so a woman like that is one that I aspire to be like. So when I wear this, I take on those characteristics like, oh, I'm fearless, honey. I'm going to change the game when I wear this. And so that's why I chose to wear it for the interview today. Nice. Yeah. So before we go, let's talk about, you know, some of your most recent collections. What's been your most latest um, collections of art? Um, well, my most recent collection, um, I have two of them. Um, New Africa mm -hmm. was one of my favorites. Um, so I've been studying the uh, history of Olmec heads in Mexico. And so a lot of people don't understand that they are actually from Africa and they were here before Columbus and that many of our DNA might date back to uh, Africans that were actually on the Americas before them. And so when the uh, Indians and the natives that were in Americas, they saw these big black folks coming on onto the land and they began to worship them. Mm -hmm. And so they, in homage to them, they built these nine foot, eight foot huge clay heads on that are still standing in Mexico. And so I said, man, that's dope. Like, mm -hmm. what if those heads had color? You know, yeah. what if they really look like where they came from? And so I took those colors that are, that are prominent in South Africa um, and, and merged them with the large um, sizes of the Olmec heads in Mexico and said, um, you know, what if we brought the color to light? Mm -hmm. And so once we know where we are, we know where we are to go. And so mm -hmm. if we are truly made of this great, uh, this great golden blood bloodline, why are we not acting like it? Mm -hmm. uh, why are we not pursuing these goals? Um, why aren't we aren't, why aren't, aren't we empowering ourselves to know that we are bigger than what we are going through right now? And so for me being, and that's why when I first got my home, the first thing I hung up was these three behind us. Cause I want to remind myself of this is our people. This is where we've come from and your gift has made room for you, but now you need to go forth and bring other people to this understanding. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that my, my creations are bigger than, oh, just pretty colors put on canvas. I want to tell the story of our ancestors. And so they understand that, oh, this is bigger than just some cute stuff. She really did some studying. Oh, yeah. And so um, my artwork is meant to be educational and inspirational. Educational and inspirational. Yes, yes, yes. Put them two together. You got edutainment. Oh, come on, edutainment. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, yeah. So look. I want to thank y'all 
for tuning in once again to yeah. another episode of Working Woman Wednesday. Put your W's up one time. Okay, we got a W. Okay. It's going down an amazing way. <laughs> yes, sir. The beautiful and beautifully talented Miss Melissa Thank A. You. Mitchell in the building. Yes, sir. If you want to give anything else to the people, anything on your mind that you think they should know oh, moving goodness. forward. So heavy. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that people need to understand that their story is not over. Um, I read a story of a woman who was 85 who mm. became an artist or even a young lady that was in um, Black Panther at 91. Yeah. Um, that our narratives are not over until it's over and that if you have an idea it didn't work out, guess what? God will give you another one. But you've got to get past that darkness. you got to get past that closed door that it's not over. Um, I became an artist at, Lord, if I'm 35, what, 32, 33? Um, just became an artist. I walk into rooms, people who are classically trained and my stuff sells before them. And God is saying, because this is your time, it's your season. Mm. So don't, you really have to go through life with blockers on. I can't worry about Kamara's doing or what Monique is doing because if my story is unique to me, I have to allow that path to just go straight through. And so that's what has allowed me to, to excel is that I, I, I embrace my isolation to let God speak to me. And I encourage you to do the same. Um, take this, this time to really develop who you are and let 2018 be the year that you become who you need to be. Mm. Um, and um, I think that's all I have to say right now. I love it. I love it. Look, make this year your best year. 2018 is yes. going down in a major yes. way. You are looking at a living example of how one idea can turn into multiple situations. You Absolutely. understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Once again, it's Key Marcane coming to you all the way live. Your favorite country cousin, your favorite Mississippian, and your best friend. You have just tuned into another episode of Working Woman Wednesday. See y'all next trip. <laughs>